Hi everyone, this is Nick Reed Reddit, and today's story is from S N No Sleep. So this is sc reading Scary Red Church Two. So um, I, I may I may read one story or two stories. I'm not sure how long this one is, but if I have time, I'll read two. Okay, from No Sleep, every per Simon five o one fourth wrote. I'm a primary school teacher. The last assignment I gave was to write an essay titled "My Dad's Job." Here's what one kid wrote. That title alone sounds creepy. But here we go. We're gonna jump into it. So, here we go. Hi, hey everyone. I'm a first grade teacher and, and I'm facing a situation that left me really unsettled. I recently gave me class an assignment to write a short essay about what their parents do for a living. It's usually a fun exercise with kids talking about their parents, doctors, firefighters, contractor workers, etc. But this time, I received an essay from one of the students who, who that gentleman that had been genuinely worried. Let's call him Timmy. A bit of context: This boy is someone of an of an enigma. He's the only student in the class whose parents have never shown up for any school events or parent teacher conferences. That's weird. Whenever I ask about his family, he cl he clams he clams up and refuses to give me any details about his father's name or their address. It's odd, but I never press too far, thinking there might be some personal issues at play. Anyway. Here's the essay he handed it. He handed it. Keep in mind, it's written by a first grader. So only it's simple and innocent, but his content will read for yourself. Oh boy, I mean, I ain't ready yet, but it sounds really creepy. But here we go. My dad's job by Timmy. My dad has a really cool job. He helps people sleep. Uh oh, it's really super important because he need, everyone needs to sleep to feel good and strong. My dad is very good at the job. He works at night when it's very quiet. He stay. He says that there are people. People living in his head tell him what to do, and that they know best. He, they say that people don't sleep enough. Somebody should help them fall asleep. Holy shit! Oh my god! My dad has lots of shiny tools that he keeps that he uses for his job. Some of them are sharp, like ones we see in the kitchen, but they're special because they help him do the job perfectly. He has big shiny knives, tiny pointy things. Sometimes he uses ropes. He's a very all, all very clean and shiny. I think they look really cool. My dad has a special room. Jesus Christ, man! Holy shit! Okay, my dad has a special room where, where he does his, where he does his job. His if his drawers it has drawers and tables and a tool with a special chair. People have to sit down. Special belts to keep him to keep him still. He says it helps him fall asleep faster. My dad helps people sleep. Sometimes there's a lot of red juice. Oh my god. That's blood. Red juice is blood. Uh, it says it's the same kind of red blood juice, the same kind of mini when I fall off my bike. I don't know why there's so much red juice, but that's it. It's normal because it means that he's doing a good job. The red juice can get air everywhere. It's a little messy. My dad cleans up really well. He doesn't like to leave any mess behind. He has a special white suit to stop the juice from getting on his clothes. Some people don't want to sleep and scream and cry. My like a little sister who has an earlier bedtime than me will have to stay up later. My dad says they're scared, but they don't want. They don't know how much better they will feel when after they sleep. He tries to calm me down, but it can be hard. My dad is very patient and tries his best to help everyone. He told me that he puts them in black bags and puts them underground to keep them sleep better. He really drives very far to a quiet place and digs deep holes. They had to put them, put people in black bags. I think it's very kind of him because it means they can sleep. The noise and disturbances. Meryl plays a game with the police. Sounds a lot of fun. He, he calls it hide and seek. The police try to find him, but he's very good at hiding. He hides so well that the police can't catch him. But Eric says the detectives have have a lot of fun trying to find him. He likes to send him funny letters to keep the game going. He sends letters to newspapers and make people laugh. One time my dad showed me a letter to his newspaper. He has lots of funny pictures and words, and I think it made a lot of people smile. He's very good at drawing and writing. He always makes his letters very interesting. My dad, my dad says that he's not allowed to use his building for his job. It's part of the game's rules and makes it more fun. It's such a secret. Nick can find a lot of his letters. My dad is really exciting, and I'm proud of him. He works very, very hard to help people sleep and make sure they're comfortable. Even though some people might be scared, my dad always knows what to do. He is the best at playing hide and seek and with the people. With the police, make everyone laugh with his letters. Last week, he told me that the police had to make the rules harder because he was so good at the game. The police told people who knew him that they, that they weren't allowed to walk alone at night. 
and I should call 911 more thing, but uh, and I think and I think it's cheating and really unfair. But he said it just makes the game more fun. I love my dad, and I, and I think he's the best job ever. He is there to help people when I need to sleep and make sure everything does this right. I'm just just want to grow up and help people too. Should I contact the authorities or am I overreacting? Generally, at a loss here. Can you use some advice? I'm seriously worried about the boy, and I can't think of any normal job that fits the description. But also, could be very, a very vivid imagination. Thanks for reading. Any guidance you can offer? <laughs> yes, the kid. Yeah, the kid's dad is a murderer, and, you, and, and you're wondering if you reported. Um, duh. Yeah, she definitely. Re yeah, definitely report it. Holy shit! I have time for another story. So this wasn't as long as I as long as I think it was. So here's an entire, entire never story. Here we go. <laughs> story two. No sleep as well. I'm trapped in my neighbor's basement. I pray for him to never find out. Okay. This year has been tough for me. Has been tough for me and my family. Not only have we moved from one country to another, but in the span of three years, we, we had to go through four moves. The first one, to search a better life. The second, due to lack of money. The third, to get close to my mother's family. Because, because the, 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 the tenant sold the house with us still living in it. And now you may wonder why I'm, why the hell am I telling you this? What does it have to do with the title of the story? Did it clickbait? I beg you, reader, please read my story till the end. As bad as it sounds, men like my, my neighbor are, are everywhere. And it's more necessary to not take ignore situations like this. The moving is just a bit of context to introduce you to my mental health problems. I won't give you too many details, but some of the some moving and changes have taken a toll in, on my head. I went through a very rough, tough patch. She, tough. It even says, no, it's tough. I was suffering suicidal thoughts, anxiety attacks. Several times, this, this culminated in me running away from my home and once they even called the police. My parents feared that something would happen to me, force them not only to see, obviously seek professional help, but also be with me at all times. As I never slept alone, never, but never home alone, always had a bathroom door ajar. No circumstances I could ever go outside without supervision. It's not that I'd had many friends back then, so this past measure has never bothered me much. Months passed, and then mental health, therefore, and physical health has, has improved in, in, infinitely. Little by little, the supervision over me had, was lowering, and social were curiously flir flourishing. I think it was going incredibly great. Too good to be true. I wish, I wish it wasn't right. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of policemen knocked on my door to talk to my and no, it wasn't for me this time. I was looking for a guy who supposedly lived in my neighborhood. I never saw the picture, but to my mom's description, he was a sleazy, bald old guy with a perverted, demonic look. He needs to say, I was scared to death. One thing that is important to keep in mind that I'm not only a child. Not, I'm not only a child, in fact, I, mean, I have many siblings, we have three living with me, all sisters. My mother had to talk with with us and us about about being extra careful, she also increased the bridge over me again. The police hang around for a couple of days, shutting the operation when no evidence was found. They never know the, the pain I would have saved if they looked a little longer. Weeks went by a little, and a little by little, we forgot about it and everything went back to normal. The, you know, as a policeman, we had never knocked the door, and my mother had never seen the picture. The paranoia of the of feeling that man's eyes every moment was dissipating. Time went by. Only then, when fooling around with my friends, I was reminded of that episode. We were completely safe, safe until exactly one year from now. Okay. Like almost every day, I went to my exercise routine in the pool, unaware that my life would make a hundred, make a hundred eighty loop in just a few hours. I swam a bit here and there. Some old gentleman, probably English, approached the pool and knew it was time to go. It was cold anyway. I don't like being surrounded by strange men on my own. I dried my hair, but how I'm headed home. It wasn't very far away from the public pool, but just about a five minute walk. If it wasn't for the lady who asked me for help in a way, I could have made it in two. She's probably in her late fifties, slim figure, gray hair, dark circles around her eyes. You can tell the poor woman was very tired, almost dead in life, with surprise a surprising sweet voice. She asked me if I could help her with supermarket bags. I couldn't refuse to thank me for the job, and she invited me over after tea. I don't know if it was out of pity or politeness, but I ended up accepting to have a tea with her. I can't recall why. Though. It is something, I, not something I, I do often, but uh, but oh my god, how much I regret it! Oh god. 
She offered me cookies and tea before I started chatting. She not was kind, but incredibly smart. We, she had a plastic surgery at one of the most prestigious universities in, my, in the country. She been referred to her years and was mother was a, and was the mother of three wonderful children, the youngest being my age. It started to get dark. I said, I said goodbye. She got up and pushed me suddenly with her thin arm. She held me tightly, very, very tightly, too tightly. A few seconds, everything went, went pitched back around me. <coughs> For the moment, everything was confusing and blurry. I had no clue what happened and how much time had passed. It was somewhere to 13 hungry. There was no light, no silent, and the humidity was unbearable. I really couldn't tell my eyes were open or closed. It would have been for an hour before I heard a noise. I don't really know. I lost track of time as soon as I opened my eyes. Footsteps on the wood could be heard, slowly and cautiously getting closer and closer. The door opened, a black silhouette could be seen moving toward, towards me. It was her. Definitely her, more tired and skinny than I remember. Both know that I had seen, if I had seen her, I, uh, I bet she had been crying. I tried to stand up, but my legs and arms were completely, entirely numb. I swear I can move down for only a few moments. She walked towards me, trembling and cautiously like when you're talking, walking to, walking by a stray dog. I might have bitten her, but she answers to. She knelt down for, for me, of course. Took me off guard when I showed my face. She said, crying with Cholby. Where am I? I exclaimed. I was scared and I said, what's going on? Who are you? What am I doing here? Please don't hurt me. I'm thinking of your son. She ignored me and started crying even harder, if possible to provide trembling each, with each sob. Don't dare c to come out, I heard, still sobbing. Please don't ask for help. Don't make any noise, I beg you, or he'll kill us both. I don't understand anything. I asked and implored, but she only wailed. Her fear was contagious, and I began crying, too. I, I knew what, what the situation was. It was really bad. It was bad. Seriously bad. Really bad. I tried to keep the, these thoughts away. A bit something told me I would, I would no longer see my parents or my siblings. I would no longer see my friends. I would no longer be, be anyone. Life is over. Everything is over. All I had left was to mourn for what I would have been if the crying lady had never brought me here. We stayed like that, crying sense for a while. Her, so her murmurs more and perceptible ceased. She started stared at me for a few seconds, seemed like hours. Stay silent and we will make out alive. She got up as if nothing happened and left. I left in pure darkness and didn't know at the time, but it was, it was the last time I would see light. I don't know how I didn't go crazy. Maybe it was a routine or something. It's woman's words that gave me hope. She said I can live. I hope she wasn't lying. Now I can only o obey her. My days were filled with plans of fantasies of escaping. Frankly, I can now move my hands, but, but not my lay feet. Every time I fell asleep, a tray of what I think was food appeared in my lap. I never knew what I ate or drank. Curiosity and hunger always overcame caution. I never ate enough. The place was small and I never got used to the pain of, of, of residual hunger or the cold food. I, it always seemed off to me that I never smelled bad. The, 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 the empathy lack of cleanliness. I should have been completely rotten by then. I tried to think not much about it though. I have strangers watching me every day. It was not a pleasant thing to imagine. Since the day we were since, I swore, uh, uh, since the day when I we burst into tears, I swore myself that I could escape no matter what. Someday I would try to know the truth, and someday, perhaps not too far away, see my family and light of day once again. However, I keep wondering who is that man the lady mentioned before, the one who wants to harm us, whose voice I am I hear every day without fail. I don't know. I don't think he knows about me yet. You know, even a woman is practicing behind me, seeming more frightened to death to my last thought or her. I must escape quickly. Something's telling me that the worst fate I can, that I can face is finding about finding out about my existence. What the hell? Interesting. Sorry. Hmm. Interesting. Well, this is Nick, and um, thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day, guys. Bye.